Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is August the 7th, 2019. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. So, lineal heavyweight champion, unbeaten Tyson Fury, with a lot of people clamoring to fight him, has decided to fight relatively unknown but unbeaten 20-0 and 0 Otto Wallet. Now, let me just say this. No one is going to say it. I have uh, absolutely no insider information. But in my opinion, this is a shrewd move, right? This is a plan B fight against a carefully picked opponent for a specific reason. Now understand, Deontay Wilder, who Fury has already signed to fight early next year, is going to fight Southpaw Luis Ortiz in a rematch. Right now, apparently, the Fury people must feel the same way I feel. Even though Luis Ortiz, right, looks like he gets winded sometimes in fights. Even though he has failed a test in the past for performance-enhancing drugs. Even though he is older than Deontay Wilder, I believe based on styles, he's going to give Wilder all he could handle. Again, let's revisit that first fight. I know many of you are going to run to the scorecards here online. I'm just going to tell you on my own scorecard Luis Ortiz was dominating the first part of that fight. Understand, that fight had the odd situation, and granted, the fights in New York, of having a ref after, after Wilder was able to sit down between rounds. At the start of the next round, the referee came over and examined with the doctor, examined Wilder. Had Wilder had a concussion or clouds in his eyes? Had he been off his game and answering questions, right? They say, how you feel? You're like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He would have lost his title without another punch being thrown. More importantly, in my opinion, that interlude where Wilder's in trouble at the end of a round, and then at the start of the next round, is given additional time, right? They don't, they don't come over to him right at the end of the round with the question of, gee, can this guy continue? No, they give him time to recover between rounds. Then at the start of the next round, he gets additional time because the doctor's looking at him, right? I believe it changed that fight. Understand, Wilder's a home run hitter. Most of his fights end by... KO. He has literally stopped every man he's faced. Remains to Vern went the distance with him. Paid for it dearly in that rematch. Was out of there in less than a round. Right? So Deontay Wilder was in a position that he's not accustomed to being in. Being buzzed by an opponent several rounds into a fight where an argument can be made, he was in worse shape than Luis Ortiz at the start of that round. Right? So that first fight was a dangerous one. They're fighting again. Now, if you're Tyson Fury and you're looking at the trouble Luis Ortiz gave Wilder, an argument can be made that Ortiz gave Wilder more trouble certainly had Wilder in more trouble than Tyson Fury ever did, right? Tyson Fury's outboxing Wilder, but he's not hurting Wilder, having the ref look at Wilder and say, gee, I need the doctor to take a look at this guy. 
right? So if you're Tyson Fury, you have to be looking at that Ortiz film and you have to be thinking to yourself, wow, a Southpaw style gives this guy a hard time, right? If you're going to fight Wilder, you have to be thinking, gee, maybe I need to consider going Southpaw, especially when, like Tyson Fury, you have the skills to go Southpaw. Understand, revisit Tyson Fury, Kevin Johnson. Tyson Fury goes Southpaw for rounds in that fight. Outboxes Kevin Johnson, right? Understand, too, the Tyson Fury you saw in the first Deontay Wilder fight was the tip of the iceberg. Tyson Fury was coming back from all kinds of problems. We'll put it that way, right? He had his own drug problem, right? He had canceled the rematch for Vladimir Klitschko, who was eager to fight Fury again. He had gained a lot of weight. He was dealing with mental health issues. So he comes back, he fights a couple of guys, right, who, you know, weren't, let's say, elite heavyweights. And then he approaches the heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder, who, of course, couldn't get a fight with Anthony Joshua. Let's be real here, right? Couldn't get a fight with Anthony Joshua. Wilder's idea of having the heavyweight title is to take on the best out there, right? Just food for thought. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of blowback. People are going to say, was Ariola the best out there? By the way, Ariola looked great in his last fight, right, against Konotsky, right? People are going to say, was Eric Molina the best? Well, you notice Eric Molina also fought Anthony Joshua, Right, Obviously, other heavyweights seem to feel that the guys Wilder was fighting were worthy of heavyweight title shots. The point is Wilder has been on the hunt to fight other guys who have given him problems. So the one guy to go 12 rounds against him, Bermain Stavern, I know people are going to say, hey, it was Bermain Stavern. The bottom line is Wilder did the rematch with him. Right? Wilder, you know, Anthony Joshua, unbeaten at the time, had a bunch of rings, excuse me, a bunch of titles. Wilder wanted to fight him. So the lineal who wasn't ready, the lineal who was two fights into a comeback, contacted Wilder, and Wilder, of course, said, yeah, I'll fight you. Right? Wilder strikes me as the kind of guy who, when the lineal calls... Wilder answers the call because he understands boxing history. Now, the key is that Fury wasn't ready. Understand, the Fury who fought Wilder wasn't doing things Fury has done in other fights. You might recall the Derek Chisora fight, and Chisora looked great against Arthur Spielka recently, right? We're talking about guys who are still having decent, big-time heavyweight fights. Well, when Fury fought Chisora, Fury's on the inside, right? You heard Konotsky in one of boxing's more interesting moments after he beat Chris Ariola. Believe it or not, one of the people they had interviewing him was Deontay Wilder. And champions are tricky, just like Vladimir Klitschko seemed to spar with all of these young lions on the way up to figure out their games. Deontay Wilder turns to Konotsky during the interview, right, about a fight involving Chris Ariola, <laughs> And the champ says to Konotsky, hey, how would you fight me? I have no doubt that as Konotsky was talking, Wilder was making a mental note, right? And of course, Konotsky said, hey, against you, I would come inside. Well, understand, Tyson Fury wasn't ready to come inside against Deontay Wilder. He was still too new in his comeback. Understand, one of the guys in his corner was Freddie Roach, who was kind of like the junior trainer for the fight. And Freddie Roach wanted Wilder to, uh, excuse me, wanted Fury to come inside on Wilder. Fury wasn't ready. 
right? The fight's interesting because Fury is outside against Wilder, never tries to get inside of Wilder's reach and stay inside of Wilder's reach. Before the fight, Fury is calling Wilder a basketball player, but yet Fury doesn't come inside and focus on Wilder's body, doesn't try to put his shoulder on the top part of Wilder's torso and rip body shots. Right? So, in my opinion, the second Wilder Fury fight is going to look and feel different from the first. Wilder, excuse me, Fury, I keep getting the guys confused, right? Maybe it's just all champs feel alike, right? But I'll just say this. I believe that Fury is going to change his game. He wants to now pursue every successful strategy that's worked against Wilder, even if it's only worked for a few rounds. So he's ambidextrous, right? He's one of those few fighters in boxing who is, right? Think Vassal Lomachenko. Think Terrence Crawford. Think Alexander Usyk. Right? One of the best attempts at beating Wilder was made by Luis Ortiz. It even caught Wilder's attention. That's why Ortiz is getting this rematch. Right? And so, just understand, Otto Wallen is that rare thing in boxing. The heavyweight who is a southpaw who is also in his prime, right? Wallen's not in his late 30s like Luis Ortiz. Wallen is 28 years old. It helps that he's unbeaten. It'll help sell the fight. Let me also state the obvious too. If lightning strikes, and let's not pretend that it can't, haven't you just watched Andy Ruiz? a late replacement, take Anthony Joshua's title, right? In boxing, you've got to be prepared to deal with contingencies. You have to be prepared to deal with the unexpected. So let's say Luis Ortiz shows up against Wilder, right? Ortiz, more than most, knows about Wilder's right hand because he's been hit, dropped, and stopped by it. I'm guessing he's going to show up knowing, hey, I'm going to defend this right hand this time. This is going to be a bigger priority for me this time. Let's say Southpaw, Luis Ortiz, beats Deontay Wilder. Well, Tyson Fury wants to be prepared to deal with a Southpaw if that happens, right? So he's picked a young lion, a guy who's a southpaw. I suspect he's going to come in and actually box for several rounds as a southpaw against Wallen. Knowing that Wilder is facing a southpaw in his next fight, a dangerous one, and also knowing that that southpaw previously had success against Wilder. In other words, one way to prepare for Wilder is to dust off your southpaw skills. Right? So I actually think Wallen was strategically picked. I also think it's going to be a troublesome fight for Fury. Because understand, Wallen might be a better athlete than Fury. Right? Don't get me wrong. Fury is coordinated. He can get on the balls of his feet. He can move around and stuff like that. But let's just say Wallen just looks in the ring like if he and Fury went through a decathlon, 
let's just say Wallen looks like he'd run faster than Fury. He'd jump higher than Fury. Right? Wallen looks like the kind of guy who has kept himself in great shape from day one. Right? He's not coming back from rehab. He's not coming back from gaining over 100 pounds. Right? So Wallen is going to be troublesome. Let me also say, too, that Wallen's going to force Fury to make some decisions because Wallen isn't always on his front foot, right? He's a guy who's going to force you to come find him. I'm not saying he moves a lot, but what I'm saying is he's not always trying to crash the pocket. In other words, you can't close your eyes and know where the guy is. Right? He's going to want you to take a couple of steps forward toward him. And as you do so, he's going to prepare himself to hit you with counters. Right? Understand, too, Fury, his dominant hand is his right hand. In other words, when Fury goes southpaw, he's really going against his normal dominant right hand. Right? Wallen looks on film, at least, to be a legitimate Southpaw. So all of this said, I do expect Fury to win the fight. Right? Wallen doesn't seem to be fighting top-level opposition. Right? Let's not kid ourselves. He's been around a few years. It's noteworthy that when you think about a top heavyweight, Wallen hasn't fought him. Right? Whereas Fury, by contrast, has fought some tricky people. Right? Vladimir Klitschko, Derek Chisora, Kevin Johnson. Right? A lot of the people Fury has fought, in my opinion, would beat the guys Otto Wallen has fought. I don't think Wallen's ready for this. Also, Fury can come out, can dust off his southpaw stance, but if the fight gets hairy, Fury can then go orthodox and can then start trying to rough this guy up. I also feel that Wallen is more physical than Deontay Wilder. So Fury, in addition to dusting off his southpaw skills, might want to get deep in the pocket and actually wrestle with this guy a little bit. Because I suspect against Deontay Wilder this time around, Rather than be on his back foot the whole fight, working behind a jab, ducking under Deontay Wilder's right hand, I believe this time Fury, in addition to fighting Southpaw against Wilder, because Southpaw's been effective against Wilder, I believe he's also going to come in the pocket one way to neutralize a long right hand is to smother it. Let me also say this, too. Some people have said to me, Dwyer, Wilder's right hand is not that long. Right? Some of you have written me and have said the Dominique Brazil KO is not a long right hand. Well, you and I just have a different definition of a long right hand. Right? A long right hand could be that the punch itself travels. A long distance, right? Fury certainly, excuse me, Wilder can hit you from the other area code. He can certainly do that. But also, in my opinion, a drop step right hand, one where a guy is far away and I step into the punch, right? I, I move my left leg and I plant it. Then I lean forward. And I hit you from distance. In my opinion, that's also a long right hand. Even if the punch itself doesn't travel that long. Right? Well, my point to you is what Tyson Fury needs to add to his game is confidence in his skill set to fight inside. Because I've been mystified. Deontay Wilder's entire career as to why a guy can't come up on him and not give him 
the opportunity to do a drop step, to plant his left leg where he can get leverage on the right hand, right? Why can't people get inside of Deontay Wilder's right hand? Right? Understand, I'm not the only person baffled here. Freddie Roach was in the corner, was watching the fight from a great vantage point. And he himself was wondering why Fury didn't go inside. Right? I believe if Wilder gets by Ortiz. Right? And I think that's a problematic fight. Right? I believe that the rematch between Wilder and Fury is going to be fought differently than the first fight was. Right? Fury might decide, okay, let me come out. Let me continue what I was doing before. Just to bank some rounds. If he can't get by my jab and movement, then he's just going to lose a bunch of rounds. But I suspect... Both men want legacy, and I suspect Fury, who played it safe the first fight against Vladimir Klitschko, the only fight against Vladimir Klitschko, then played it safe when he fought Wilder the first time. I believe Fury this time around is going to say, okay, look, this man hits too hard from round one to round 12. Let's remember one of the miracles of that first fight was that Fury gets off the canvas after getting dropped hard in round 12. Right? I'm expecting Fury to take an Andre Ward approach. If you remember Andre Ward against Edison Miranda, for example. Right? Take the Andre Ward approach and say, okay, look, I know this guy has a big hand. I'm going to come in and I'm going to riddle his body with body shots to take the steam out of his punches in the middle rounds. So if I get hit with a big punch late, that punch is not going to have as much gas on it. Right? So Wallen, being a southpaw, being a young lion who's going to require fury to work, being a guy who's a little bit more physical than Deontay Wilder, but not having the big punch, not having fought high-level competition. I believe Wallen is a good opponent for Fury from a style perspective, right? Dust off those southpaw skills against an unbeaten fighter, right? Force yourself to have to move against a fighter who's not always crashing the pocket, right? Wrestle with the guy a little bit. Understand that the guy, unless you do something big, is going to be around for several rounds. I'll be surprised if Fury is able to KO Wallen early like he KO'd his last opponent. I like Fury in the fight, unlike others, because Wallen is a southpaw, right? While at first I thought, wow, Fury's not even giving us a fight against some guy we know. Now I understand it a little bit better, right? Wallen's a southpaw. That makes him a good opponent at this stage of Fury's comeback. I like Fury in the fight. I am expecting it to be a better fight than most. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.